everybody. Welcome to Revival, a chance of doing a 180 back to Christ. And I want to talk to you a little bit about who I am. And if you know who I am, you would know that I have high anxiety. I panic about a lot of different things and stress over different things. And even though sometimes you might see me talk, if you talk to me or my sense of humor, it doesn't mean it may not seem like it, but I actually have a lot of anxiety. And things weren't that much different when I was a kid. In fact, when I was a kid, I was afraid of a lot of different things. In fact, even my prayers for protection were so long. Because I would do my regular prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Guard me, Jesus, through the night and wake me up with the morning light. Yes, I still have that memorized. Um, I would do that scripted prayer that I would always do every night. And then I would go into my, all right, now we got to be real, God. I need you to protect me a little bit. And I need you to protect me from monsters, of course, being a little kid, um, about in the 90s elementary school. I need you to protect me from monsters, hornets, because, you know, hornets are deadly. But also, not only that, uh, killer gorillas, yes, killer gorillas from Congo, not the book or the movie, but rather my brother's computer game that I that he got for his birthday. Uh, T-Rex from Jurassic Park, but not from the first movie. Again, not the books, because I didn't read the books yet. But from the movie, and not the first movie, but The Lost World. But not actually from the movie, but from the poster that I have right in my wall with the T-Rex ready to eat me. Because I was smart and wore 3D glasses, even though 3D movies weren't quite full on yet. There was still some, but not full on. There were some 3D glasses you could get out of a uh, cereal box, and it worked for it, and it freaked me out. And then not only that, the characters from Clue. Yes, Clue, the board game. But not from the board game, but just like my brother who got a computer game of Congo, I got a computer game of Clue that had real actors that I didn't realize the characters were real. So I need to be protected by them. And I wish I was making that up, but I was full of anxiety. But the ironic part about it, being a kid, is I would do that prayer. And yet, even sometimes in the middle of the prayer, because I had a longer list, I don't remember what I all prayed for, but those were the gyps of it, G the main over description of what I prayed about. I still fell asleep, even in the middle of the prayer because I gave my fears to God and I slept. Now, being a kid, I could have, I, even though my parents were sleeping in the other room, tell you the truth, I was pretty much on my own. Uh, T-Rex could have ate me, um, Killer 8 could have jumped in my room, attacked me, or Colonel Mustard could have came out and hit me with that candlestick. Who would have known what would have actually happened to me? But I gave it to God and then I fell asleep. Just fine. I did not allow my fears to take control over me, and I allowed God to control how my night went. And, surprise, I'm still here. I still have anxiety, but I'm still here. Now, there's a moment where even the disciples got to experience anxiety. And they put their faith towards the different beliefs, or I would say, into a type of master. And this master was their fears. And a lot of times, let's be honest, we do the same thing. So kind of going in there, I'm not going to go into the scripture. It is Luke 8 that I'm focusing on because if you haven't already, and I will post a link to it, I read the scripture of Luke 8 and I already have the video. Check it out. It is just me reading the scripture, adding some sound effects because it's more audio focused, even though you'll see the words. It's that giving you a chance to really listen to it and kind of try to experience it. Not perfect, but trying it out. But here I want to just talk about the scripture. If you want to read it on your own, that'd be great. If you want to listen to it, listen to it. But I want to talk about it. Luke 8, where they tell where Jesus finished with the parables, telling the reason why he's telling the stories and the meanings of them. And he tells them to go across the sea. They go across the sea. 
depending what version you read, and I read the ESV, but if you read the NIV, I believe, it mentions about bird come. I don't remember what kind of bird it was, but a bird come and giving us a hint, a foreshadowing, and with experience of uh, fishermen would know these birds mean, and most movies would say it this way, there's a storm coming. And there was a storm coming. The question you have to ask, did Jesus know this? Which he probably did, because if you read the Bible and you kind of get the picture, Jesus is God. He's not kind of God, he's not like God, he is God. So he probably knows the storm's coming and he's doing it on purpose. But a storm's coming and they go out and see and the storm hits. Probably was calm at first, but it hit them. And it was not smooth sailing from there. No, it was panicky. It was freak out. They were scared. And they go and they wake up Jesus with the main line of quote I want to, you to understand. They say, Master, Master. Now he does come up, he does wake up, and he tells them, he calms the storm. And if you're like me with Sunday school, you might sit there, man, he was angry, but I don't actually know if he was fully angry. It seems like he rebuked them and said the question, where is your faith? But I'll get to that in a minute, but I kind of question that a little bit, if that's how he said it. But what I do want to focus right now is them saying, master, master. Now, when you hear master, master, we live in a world that we need to be careful because someone could be insulted. But I'm really not going to be careful. It does say master, master. It, scripture does not need to be changed. It's in Greek. It does say master, master. It also means leader. It also means there. In different translations, it also says master, master. It doesn't need to be changed because it's important to understand master, master means in control. The person that has the leadership. He is the main honcho. But they say master, master. But who do they think is actually the master? Now, they call Jesus master, but it seems like their fear of the weather, and the weather is becoming their master. Now, weather, we, usually, we can't control weather. We can predict weather, but we can't control it. Even back then, even though they don't have Kelloland, if you're from Sioux Falls, you know what Kelloland is, or South, South Dakota, Kelloland, or any other weather channel that you may have. You could predict, predict weather, and back then they were able to check nature and tell the storms coming. Oh, I'm sorry, storms coming. They can usually picture that, but in this case, it still controlled them. The weather was their master, and they go to Jesus and say, "We're all gonna, we're perishing." Some translation, "We're dying." In other words, if it was a movie, "We're all gonna die." That's how they went to Jesus. It wasn't their master. Jesus, even though they called Jesus their master, they weren't acting like Jesus was their master, at least with their fears. And Jesus comes up and he calms the storm, just like that. And it's incredible because there's only written of one being, one person being able to control weather. That's God. And this is what's also ironic about this. This is what's crazy. Jesus didn't pray for God to stop the weather. He just stopped the weather and calmed it. And there's a sense of calmness, not just within the weather, but within themselves. Their fear changed, but it wasn't a scary, we're all going to die fear, but rather that respect and intimidation fear, like, who is this? that he controls the weather. Whew. That's a master. And you kind of get that with them, and that changes. But this is the crazy part. Jesus then asks, where is your faith? Now, as I focused, the people didn't know who their master was, even though they knew Jesus was their master because they called him master. In their hearts, their fear was still controlling them, so like their fear of the weather was becoming their master. And Jesus says, where is your faith? And we read that, because I've read it like that, and it's just recently where I'm like, did Jesus say, where is your faith? Or was it more, it's the challenge? 
You were kind of on your own. Now, you weren't actually on your own. God was here with you. You weren't on your own. But, but, I'm not going to be here physically with you all the time. Sometimes God is taking the wheel, but sometimes he's just sitting in the passenger seat, letting you drive, seeing where you're going, letting you make the decisions. So where is your faith when it feels like you're on your own? That's a challenge. Because when we are faced with fear and anxiety and stress, it's easy to say, I have faith in God, I have faith in Jesus, when things are smooth riding, when smooth sailing. But when that storm hits, it's a little harder. And that's important to think on those levels. Who is our masters? Who is our master? Not masters, but master. And when things aren't smooth sailing and we're in that storm, where is our faith? And the reason why I think this is important in seeing in the scripture and understanding this is because I feel that in today's world, all over the world, but especially now just because we are in America and we're seeing the news or even just locally where we're at, we're in a storm. We are in a huge storm. And the struggles I have with it is the storm is really bringing a lot of hate and split. Not within just believers and non-believers that usually the battle is, but between even believers, even within ourselves. And I've dealt with it. I've been hit by it. Not just by other people, but even within myself. I've hit depression. I've hit stress, anxiety. I've questioned of what am I even here for? And it's gotten harder and hard trying to have faith and the winds get sturdier. But you still have to question, one, who is my master in all of this? And two, where is my faith? Do I have faith in my master? Because that is all over. Because even looking at just the simplest thing of the question of we need to wear masks. I see two different levels here. One, you have the side that says we all need to wear masks because it's about our health and protecting others, which they make a lot of sense because some of the people that said that have lost others, not only grandparents or older, but some spouses, they lost spouses. It got them. Some lost children, so it makes sense. But then they attack those that don't wear the mask and say, and I have heard this, you're not a Christian because you put yourself first, your selfishness before others. But the other side's not innocent either because they argue, well, I'm not wearing a mask because it's about freedom. And it's about protecting my rights and what this nation stands for. And we need to have faith in God. So I'm not wearing this mask because I have faith that God has control over my life. Which makes sense. But we have that mindset that we attack the other person who disagrees. That you need to wear the mask. Otherwise you don't have faith in God and you care more about yourself, or you don't wear the mask, because that means you don't trust in God. I see both arguments on both sides, yet the one thing that I see missing, even though we say it's there, is our faith in Jesus Christ. Because if we had faith in Jesus Christ, if someone, no matter what their view is or what your view becomes, Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. It's, Jesus has control. It's like, well, aren't you gonna live in fear? We need to do this and this. You're right, that's something we need to take, but to be honest, Jesus is in control. 
He controls the storm itself. He doesn't know how to just strategize to get through the storm. He controls the storm. But the question is, even though he is master of the storm, is he master of our heart? Because he gives us the choice to let us become, letting him become the master of our heart. He doesn't need us, but we need him. But the choice of heart is up to us. So my question to you is two questions. Who is your master and where is your faith? Not as a rebuke, but as a challenge. A challenge that I need, that I know you need, the church needs, the nation needs. Because we do need a revival, but not a revival as the numbers, but as a revival of ourselves. Are we willing to do a 180 back to Christ, to love others and share the gospel to others? Or are we gonna tell others who is right and who is wrong, rather than show them that either way, God and Jesus is in control. And if you are someone, someone that struggles as a Christian or not a Christian, or have never been introduced to Christ, I want to invite you. In fact, you can even message me. I will post my email, and you'll contact, and it will be me messaging you. I'll, I can even do video chat. I will message you and pray for you. To take next steps. But again, who is your master and where is your faith?